Hey guys, today I'm going to show you guys how to properly downscale photos in Photoshop. Now I wanted to do this video because I had a lot of problems when I was trying to downscale my photos in Photoshop to post them on the web. I take a lot of photos at night of the stars or in the forests and I noticed that whenever I downscaled my photos from a large size to a smaller size for Facebook, let's say, or Instagram, the leaves or the stars or all the fine details would be lost or too sharp or haloed out or smudged and I, I always wondered if you could fix that and I went for a few months like this just kind of in purgatory because there is really no other YouTube videos that showed me how to fix this so just by luck I stumbled upon kind of my own way of fixing this and I'm hoping it solves any other person's issues so now let's get down to it. We're going to open Photoshop. I'm going to File, Open, and we're going to choose three prime examples of what can happen if you downscale the wrong way. So I'm going to choose a photo with a lot of fine detail, like this snow here. A photo with not a lot of fine detail. I'm going to choose. Hmm. Let me, I'll do this phone pole here. And then I need a lot of, I need a photo with a lot of perpendicular and jagged edges. Because those are the hardest to work with. So I'm going to do, open those up. I have it in, an, I have it in an, another folder, so I need to open it up again. Now I need a photo with a lot of jagged edges. For example, a forest. So first we're going to start with the fine details. I'm going to show you guys what will happen if you downscale wrong, you know, trying to upload to Facebook and it will ruin your image. So if you see in this picture of the snow here, I captured a lot of crisp detail in the snow, all the separate snowflakes, and everything looks pretty eye poppy. So what most people do is they press Control alt i that opens up the image size window and the default that comes on Photoshop that's already selected for you for resampling is automatic and most people choose by cubic sharper we're gonna do automatic and I'm gonna show you guys what'll happen if you downscale wrong we're gonna go to about 1000 press OK let's go to 100 percent now I don't know if you guys notice but I see that my photo looks blurry as hell doesn't look sharp at all. All of my fine details are gone. And if I zoom in, none of these pixels are as sharp or, you know, edgy as they used to be, which which was the point of the photo. So I'm wondering what the hell, right? So I go back. Let's go back, fix this. We're gonna go open that, that window again. Again, it's Control Alt I. We're gonna choose what I think is the best way to downsize an image. And a lot of times most people don't even know this exists. It's called the bilinear option. You're going to click that. And what it does is it preserves the sharpness of the photo you already had. If you already sharpened a photo, bilinear will keep that as much as it can, even if you downscale to a ridiculously small size. So now, now that we got the bilinear selected, we're going to go again 1000. Press OK. Now let's zoom in. As you can see, all the detail has been preserved. This image is as sharp as it was at 1920 pixels as it is now at 1000 pixels wide. So let's go to the next example. Say we don't have a lot of detail, just a lot of lines, but they don't really, you know, they're just straight lines, there's not a lot of corners. So I'm going to show you the second problem with downscaling wrong, and that's called haloing. This really takes me off because if, if you've already saved the picture, like the way you downscale it wrongly there's no fixing it so again we're going to control alt i and we're going to choose by cubic sharper this is what most people choose i'm going to go 1000 now let's zoom in see most people aren't going to notice this but if you've been color grading editing film editing pictures recording movies for a long time you get an eye for this sort of thing and i'm seeing it right away let's zoom in Photoshop added haloing to my photos. 
Can you see these dark outlines around the sticks here and the pulled? Those are unnecessary sharpness and contrast that I didn't want to edit on my photo. Photoshop edited my photos without my permission. And that's not what I want here. I'm going to go back. We're going to choose bilinear. 1000. Now, if we sit back and look, all the detail is still there. This image is just as crisp as it was, as big as it is now. I'm going to zoom in. No halo. Everything looks fine. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to show you guys the hardest thing to do with downscaling. Pictures of trees, dead brushes, grass, or whatever are the hardest to work with when it comes to sharpness control. You don't want these to look way too sharp or else it'll be kind of hard to look at. Could, you know, be displeasing for the viewer's eye. Now, I kept this photo a little extra sharp to show you something later. Right now, we're going to do our class example. We're going to choose automatic again. We're going to go 1000. The smaller your photo is, the harder Photoshop has to work to resize and add sharpening or keep the sharpening ratio. We're going to press OK. And again, all the sharpness is gone. These trees are not sharp. Everything looks out of focus. There's haloing above these trees here that I didn't want. Highlights are gone. It, it looks really awful. I'm going to go back. And again, like you've already guessed, we're going to go to bilinear. Press OK. Now, as you can see, all the details there. However, since there's so many jagged edges, perpendicular lines running together, a lot of sharp diagonal lines, the sharpness is a little out of the roof. And when I see stuff like this, where it's so sharp, it's just adding its own highlights. That's how you know you need to do something about it. You can see these tree leaves look like there's white dots in them. That's how you know these aren't good. Taking pictures of a pine tree is a good way to work out how to do this. So we're going to go back, and the way to fix your photo being naturally too sharp, again with like trees or something like that, or the stars, go back, back to its original size. We're going to go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. We're just going to barely blur it, just to the point where it, you know, kind of dulls out the edge on the sharpness. And I like to put the radius to about 0.3 pixels. I'm going to press OK. Now we're going to go choose bilinear, and we're going to choose the 1000 option again. Now let's see how this looks. Looks much better. There's no glaring sharpness. Everything still looks really good. Uh, there's no ridiculous sharpness that's hurting my eyes. All the detail is still there that I want. I can see each and every individual branch and leaf and the clouds in the background just fine. So I hope that helped you guys. Um, who have been having trouble with this for a while because I know I couldn't find any way to help this. And if you guys have any questions or anything at all, please comment in the uh, comment section. I'd love to answer your questions. And if you find an easier way to do this, I would also love to hear that. Thanks for watching, guys.